Managing text. Colorful graphics and images can certainly attract a reader's attention. But the text is the most important part of the layout, which actually communicates our message. Therefore, it's essential to learn and understand all of the ways in working with text in InDesign. Text in InDesign is placed using the text frames. So let's first select the Type tool from the Tool panel and create a text frame by just clicking and dragging the cursor on this document page. Now let's paste a sentence inside this frame. The font current used for this text is Times New Roman and that can be displayed in our control panel's character formatting controls font field. Likewise, you can see the size of the font displayed as 12 points in the font size field. To see the text clearly, let's zoom in on the document to 200% by pressing Ctrl and 2. When we wish to change the font family and font size, let's select the text in the document by using the Type tool. Similarly, let's select the font face in our font field and then pressing the up and down arrow keys from a keyboard helps us in changing the font family in the control panel. When the font family changes, those changes appear in the text frame simultaneously. Now in case we wish to change the font family to Georgia, then we can even type the word in the text field. Once we start typing the word, the font family will get displayed in this field. Clicking the Enter key changes the font in the text frame. The font style currently used in this sentence is Regular Georgia. To change the style of the font family, we can make use of the Style drop-down list, through which we can change the font style to Regular, Italic, Bold, and Bold Italic. According to the font family, the options in this style field vary. To increase or decrease the font size, we can make use of this font size drop-down list. Now from the list, let's choose 18 points. Now immediately you can notice that the size of the font has increased from 12 to 18 points. We can also change the font family and font size through the Type Menu's Font and Size options. Next to this font command, you'll see a sub-menu displaying the whole list of font families and font styles used by InDesign. Clicking this black arrow helps us bring out the font families that are listed below. The control panel in InDesign displays both the character formatting controls and paragraph formatting controls. Clicking on these icons help in toggling between character formatting controls and paragraph formatting controls just like this. Please note the font family and font size can be changed even by using this context menus, font and size options. Now above all this, we can also create type on a path by using the Type on a Path tool. And that's what we're going to discuss in our very next lesson. Type on a Path When you create items such as an object or text frame, the outside shape of these items is considered the object's path. Not only can InDesign fit text inside a text frame, it also lets you position text so that it runs along the outside of the frame. This is done using a Type on a Path tool. Now let's see how they work. Type on a Path tool allows the text to flow along an open or closed path. And the shortcut key used for Type on a Path is Shift and the letter T. Here in this document you'll see an open semicircular path already placed. Now let's select the Type on a Path tool from the Tool panel and insert the cursor on the open path. Now let's start typing on the path. As we do, you'll notice the text flowing along the open path. Once the text is finished, let's zoom in on this document to 200% by pressing Ctrl 2 and then drag the page using the hand tool. Now let's keep the text selected by using the selection tool. At once, a thick vertical line with a small box is seen appearing on both ends of the path. By adjusting the lines, we can position the text exactly on the path, where we need them to be. The first square is the in port, and the next one is the out port. Text is threaded on a path by using these two square icons. To make a few more adjustments for the text, let's go to Type Menu and select the Type on a Path, and then choose Options Command. 
This opens a Type on a Path Option dialog box. Now note that the Type on a Path Option dialog box can even appear when we double-click this tool on the Tool panel. To view the updated changes, let's keep the preview selected. Then through the Effect menu, we can control the appearance of the text on the path through various options present in the drop-down list. For example, selecting the Skew option helps in distort the text vertically as it is positioned along the curves in our path. Likewise, selecting the other four options, such as Rainbow, 3D Ribbon, Stair Step and Gravity, lets you apply different types of text appearance on the path. Now let's set back the option to Rainbow. The Effects option is followed by Align menu. Using the Align menu options, we can control the position of the text in relationship to our path. Here, the Ascender option positions the text below the path, whereas the Descender positions the text above the path. The Center option is used to position the text in the middle of the path. Then finally, here comes the Baseline option, which positions the text exactly on the baseline of our path. Selecting the Flip option helps us to position the text on the other side of the path, as you see now. Now, if the spacing of the text is uneven, then let's use the Spacing option. Selecting negative values will make our character move away, while positive values make them get closer. The last option in this dialog box is the To path, which will allow us to position the vertical alignment of the text on top, center, or bottom of the path's stroke weight. Once when everything is assigned, we click the OK button. And hence, by using all these options, you can make your text look better on the path. Now let's end this lesson with a bit of a warning. That is, whenever you try to adjust the text on a path using the vertical lines, please ensure that you don't click on the Import or Outport icons, because this will mess you up. So be careful while selecting the vertical lines. Using Placeholder Text Sometimes we have to wait for an editor or client to submit text for a design layout until the very last minute. Now this happens quite often. In such cases, we need to have some dummy text to be filled on that frame. Now this can be done inside InDesign by using the placeholder text. Placeholder text is a dummy Latin text called Lorem Ipsum Text. And it's been used by desktop publishers and others for years to fill layout text frames with dummy text. To place dummy text inside a text frame, let's first select the Type tool and place it into this text frame. Then let's go to Type menu and select Fill with Placeholder Text option. Immediately you'll notice the text frame filled with the text with current fonts, size and style, and so on, of that text frame. When we zoom in the document to 200%, you can see the text frame with a series of somewhat nonsensical sentences derived from some Latin components. This text is referred to as placeholder text or dummy text. Then let's fit back the document by pressing Ctrl and 0. If we're willing to use our own text as placeholder text, then let's switch back to the Adobe InDesign CS4 installation folder by using the Alt and Tab keys. Likewise, let's even bring the desktop window where we have placed a notepad file by the name placeholder.txt file. Let's now select this placeholder text file and drag and drop it into the Adobe InDesign CS4 folder. The text inside this file will now be used as our placeholder text. Also remember that any .txt file by the name placeholder text placed inside this folder will be used as the dummy text instead of the default Latin text. Let's now go back to the InDesign document and place our type cursor into this first text frame. And then, right-clicking the mouse button, let's choose Fill with Placeholder Text option from our context menu. You'll now notice a new type of text inserted here, and zooming in on the document will help you see the text much more clearly. Thus, a text plays an important role in the look of an InDesign layout, and most people really don't realize it. Trying to design a layout without text is like stumbling through the dark. Hence, always try to design a perfect layout with dummy text, and replace it with the real text later once you receive it.
importing text. Text can be typed directly into an InDesign document. However, the easiest way of adding text inside of our layout is through importing text from an outside source. Text is imported into a page by using the place command. Let's now see how to import text inside InDesign. To place a text file in this page, let's go to File menu and select the Place command. This opens a Place dialog box. And here at the bottom you can see an option Show Import option. Let's turn on this checkbox and then let's select an InDesign file by the name Text and click the Open button. This opens a Place InDesign document dialog box that gives us information regarding what is there in the document. For example, it's a totally one-page document and its preview is displayed on the preview area. If you have a multi-page document, then you can choose your desired pages by using this Pages field. By using this Crop To field, we can trim the excess of our documents by choosing this Page Bounding box. Or you can even choose the Bleed or Slug Bounding box. Now by default, the document is set to the Page Bounding box. The next option is the Layers. If we have created a document with layers, then we can specify the layers that we need to import by using this Show Layers. To update the links, you can make use of Update Links option. Now let's ignore this and click the OK button. You'll now see the text loaded cursor with a small thumbnail of the page attached to it. Let's now click the cursor on top of the page bounding box. And immediately, the text gets imported into our document page. Please note, text import into InDesign can be done from another InDesign document, from a saved notepad file, Word document, or through the copy and paste method. Now we can move to the second page of this document by pressing Alt and Page Down. Let's once again open our Place dialog box by pressing Ctrl and D. Here, let's deselect the Show Import options, and then can select the imported text Word file and click Open. The cursor is now loaded up with a little bit of text attached to it. Once we click the cursor, InDesign creates a text frame from the top where we clicked and ends up at the bottom margin. There is more hidden text inside this frame and that is known through this little red plus sign which means the text is overset. When we click our cursor on this plus sign, the cursor gets loaded with the remaining hidden text. Again, when we click the cursor on the next column, the text starts flowing from top to the bottom of this column, as you see now. Or we can even import text just by drawing a new text frame inside this column. Flowing text manually through this method is tedious and cumbersome. And rather than manually load the overflow text onto the cursor, we can use the autoflow pages command to easily load the cursor with the overflow text. To see how an autoflow text command works, Let's undo our steps and get back our cursor with the fully loaded text. Then, by holding the Shift key, change our cursor somewhat like an inverted S. Now we can click our cursor and you'll see the text getting added into this page. And it's also created one more additional page to hold all the text. Thus, through a single click, you can make your entire story flow into your document page. Here's a tip for you. Semi Auto Flow option works by holding the Alt key, and this will allow us to flow text in a page by page manner. Well, now you've learned how to make the text flow inside your InDesign application, right? Very good. So, I hope soon you'll be implementing this in your document layouts. Text Frame Options Every text frame that we create has its own set of options that can affect the way text is displayed in our document. The options can be accessed by using the Text Frame option. The Text Frame Options command helps in controlling the flow of the text inside a text frame. Its shortcut key is Control and B. Now here's how the Text Frame options work inside InDesign. From the document page, let's select this text frame by using the Selection tool. Then let's go to Object Menu and select Text Frame Options Command, or you can just press Ctrl and B. This opens a Text Frame Options dialog box containing a general option through which we can control the columns, 
inset spacing, and vertical justification. To view all the updating changes, let's keep the preview checkbox selected. At present, the number of columns used in the text frame is just one. To increase the columns, let's click the up arrow. When we do so, you'll notice the columns in this text frame increased from one to three. Then, using this width field, we can increase or decrease the column width of this text frame. Now, let's enter a value in the width field as two inches and hit the tab key. The column width of the text frame is seen increased. The space in between columns, now that's called the gutter. Here, let's type a value of 0.3 inches to increase the gutter space. The next option is the fixed column width. Now, let's uh, skip this and move on to the inset spacing option. To see the changes clearly, let's click the OK button and zoom in on that portion to 100% by pressing Ctrl and 1. Then, let's bring back the dialog box by pressing Ctrl B. Added space in between the text and the text frame is called inset spacing. Here in the top field, let's increase the value from 0 to 0.25 inches by using this up arrow. Doing so, added an inset space on all four sides of the text frame, as you can see. This link icon helps in adding equal space in all the four sides of the text frame. To increase or decrease the inset space for an individual side, you have to unlink this link icon. The inset spacing option is followed by the vertical justification, which allows in aligning the text inside the frame. Now let's set back the number of columns to 1, so that we can see this option more clearly. Presently, the vertical justification is set to top. Let's change it to center. Now instantly you can see the text getting aligned from the top to the center of the text frame vertically. Likewise, when we choose the justify option, the text in the frame gets justified vertically, all the way from the top to bottom by adding a leading amount to all these lines. When we select this option, we have the control over this paragraph spacing limit. Let's type a value in this field of 0.25 inches. Once the value is entered, you'll notice the space in between the paragraphs getting increased, whereas the space between the lines gets reduced. The next option in this dialog box is the baseline option, through which we can control the first baseline offset. This will help fit our first line of text in the text frame. Generally, it is set to Ascent. If needed, you can set this to any of these four options. And then using the Min option, we can apply a minimum distance for use with the first baseline offset option. Before closing this dialog box, let's set the number of columns to 3 and width to 2 inches. And then click OK. Now, when we resize the text frame, you'll notice the column width, as well as the gutter space, getting varied. So when you wish to maintain a specific column and gutter width for a text frame, you have to make use of the fixed column width option. Now then, let's undo the steps and bring back our dialog box by pressing Ctrl and B. Here, the number of columns is 3, the width is 2 inches, and the gutter is 0.3 inches. To maintain all these settings in our text frame, let's select this fixed column width and click the OK button. When we now resize the frame, it doesn't work. Whereas when we resize the second column, it gets resized to two columns. Dragging the frame again snaps it back to three columns. Here the column, gutter and width settings of the text frame are fixed and maintained. So once you create a text frame, you can have total control on the flow of text within your text frame by using the Text Frame Options dialog box.